Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Welcome back to my channel, Inside the Hem. So how many times have you gone to gather the waistband of a skirt and you've got your two long basting stitches and it's taken you years and years, it feels like, to sew those basting stitches and you're pulling them and you're you know, trying to get all the um, gathers even and then snap, one of the thread breaks. The most annoying thing ever in the history of sewing. I literally hate gathering because of that process. Well, there is a whole new way to do it. Maybe it's not new, new to me. Um, and it's called cord gathering. So it's a trick that uh, makes gathering your fabric easier and runs like zero risk of the thread snapping. So let me show you how it's done and then we'll assess how it worked. Okay, so we have a loose thread, sorry. Um, we have like our little mini bodice here, so cute. And then we have a skirt that we are going to gather and attach to the bodice. I have made the bodice half as long as the skirt. I'm not sure what the standard is for gathered skirts and garments, but I figured two times was a good place to start. So we'll see. Um, but normally whenever you um, make gathers in your skirt, you would create two rows of basting stitches, one at a half inch and then one just outside your seam line. And then you pull those taut and you create all the gathers in there. Well, we're gonna try it. This is called cord gathering and we are gonna try it with lovely dental floss, which we all have hanging around here somewhere. So you want to make your dental floss a little bit longer than your bodice. You need to trim your floss. Um, and so then you lay your skirt at the half inch seam line. Um, then you lay your floss over your fabric like so. Right again, um, just inside the seam line. So just inside five eighths for most skirts. I have my machine set at a three millimeter stitch width and a two millimeter stitch length. Um, and we're just trying to get it to go just over the dental floss. So needle down. And that's too far over, hold please. There we go, that should do it. Okay, perfect. And now we are gonna start sewing our zigzag stitch and you are gonna wanna back stitch here. Okay, and you can kind of test and see if you're catching any of the dental floss at all, you're gonna wanna widen your stitch width so just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna go up to four and then you start stitching. Okay, so you wanna go a few inches or a few stitches and then you gently pull from the front and you'll see it starts to gather in the back. That's what we are aiming for here. Pull from the front and it'll gather it nice and taut. So you wanna make sure you have a really strong thread or cord, um, which is why dental floss is so great, but you can also use like heavy duty thread would work. And you just keep sewing and pulling. Like so. And remember, we only made this a few inches longer than the bodice, so we don't want to pull too tight. So I'm actually going to stop pulling and back stitch a couple times here. Flip my threads. And then we should be able to distribute the gathers evenly across our cord like so. 
And again, this is only two times as long. So if you want a tighter um, gather, you would need to make your skirt wider. But again, so you kind of get the idea there, right? I will say in comparison to the um, traditional method, the dental floss is a little slippery. So it's having a hard time holding it in place. But I would kind of eyeball... Let's eyeball the length we want here, like so. This is very rough. <laughs> I'm gonna try and tie a knot and see if that helps. Keep it in place. Whoop. There we go. Does the knot help? No, the knot does not help at all. So maybe try a loop. How do you do a loop? No, I don't know how to tie a loop. Okay. Well, anyways, you guys get the picture. So now we're going to try and attach this to the skirt or to the bodice um, and see how the ruffles look in comparison to a regular method. So like usual, we're going to pin along this line here. I will say I found it a little bit difficult um, to keep the dental floss at the half inch line I felt like I was doing a wider seam allowance than I should have so there's that already that I'm nervous about that I'm gonna end up stitching over the seam line okay there we have our pin skirt let's go back to our regular stitch length non-zigzag put it at the five eighths. Yeah, I can already tell I'm gonna be ripping out some stitches. pin and then you should be able to pull out the dental floss but I think I've sewn over it well maybe not yeah I don't know that it's going to come out guys so now do I want dental floss in my dress for the rest of my life I don't know probably not do I have it coming? It's slippery. Okay, dental gloss is out. So let's see how the gathers look. So as you can see, a lot of the, well, here's some more of that dental gloss that didn't come out. Dang it. Okay, so I would need to go in now and pull out all this zigzag. I mean, I guess, if I practice a whole bunch, I would get better at keeping it at that half inch seam line. Um, but if I am, you know, just trying this for the first time, like I am, um, I'm going to say that's not that beautiful. And I don't want dental floss in my dress forever, but I've sewn over it so many times that it's just, it's not going to come out. So... And then in terms of how the gathers themselves look, I will say it's pretty good. What I'm looking for not to happen is to have a whole lot of places where it's folded over itself. I want it to be actually gathered and not just like made a pleat, made a gigantic pleat. And like, here's an example of a gigantic pleat. Do y'all see that part right there? This is not a beautiful gathered section in my opinion that just made kind of like an ugly pleat but for the most part everywhere else like all through here this looks pretty good so be it if you couldn't see my my stitches so all in all I give this mixed reviews I think that I would try it again 
and just maybe put a line of basting stitches um, at the seam line to give me a guide so I would pay closer attention to not um, crossing over the seam line like I have on several areas here. Um, but I think with practice, I could have done a little bit better of a job. Also, can we just comment on how cute that would have actually been as a dress? I only had these few scraps, but what a cute little girl's dress. <laughs> um, anyways, so I don't know. With practice, this could be better. That's my final verdict. Okay, so cord gathering takes some practice. <laughs> Maybe I needed to use my rubber band trick from yesterday <laughs> to um, make sure that I kept the right seam allowance. It's just, there's a lot to manage with keeping the floss where it needs to be, making sure the needle is bouncing over the floss like it's supposed to, while also keeping your seam allowance. There's a lot going on there. Um, so, with some practice, I do feel like this could be a really good method. Certainly more foolproof than the standard um, two lines of basting stitches. I think that when you get it down and you're able to maintain that seam allowance like you're supposed to, I do feel like it would produce some really beautiful gathers. And I also feel like using a dental floss, you could make some marks like every... I don't know, whatever quarter length of your garment is, like if you're trying to fit it to like a 12 inch waistband, just using an easy number, um, like every three inches, you would make a little mark on the um, dental floss and that would help you know how many gathers and making sure your gathers are all even. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm gonna keep practicing this one. I'm not gonna say that this is a trick and that it doesn't work, but I'm not so quick to say, oh, this is a treat. It's the best thing ever. I'm going to replace, you know, the, the standard method. Um, I'm going to keep practicing and I'll have to get back to you guys on that one. But for those of you that have been doing cord gathering for a while, let me know if you have any additional tips in the comments, um, things that could make it a little bit easier to kind of manage all of that stuff. Maybe you don't use dental floss and you use some other kind of cording. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe you just have a way to make it more accurate, I guess. Um, cause Lord knows I do not want to go back and pull out all of those zigzag stitches that showed on my little fake mock-up dress that I made. Um, anyways, so I hope you found that helpful and I hope you will all give cord gathering a try if you haven't already. Um, tomorrow's video is going to be a neat little trick using your seam ripper. If you've ever noticed that little red like dot on the end of your seam ripper, I'm going to show you what that's for and it's going to blow your mind. Um, but until then, check the description box. It will have links for all the videos in this week's series. You can check one if you've missed it or reference back um, like in the future. If your future self wants to come back and find this video. Hi, future self. Um, so check the description box for all the information about the series and all the other video links. And until tomorrow, I will see you all then. Bye.